Welcome to Have a Chat. I'm Audrey Lynch with my co-host, Judy Loche, this afternoon. Another beautiful Monday? Let's say no. it is. <laughs> okay, let's just say it is. Beautiful. It is a little crappy out there today. We were having our first snowfall. Yes. It's Rain slash snow slash mm -hmm. all of tricky the roads. Yep, a bit tricky roads. Tricky. It definitely is. No school. No, no school today. The kids are home. There. This is their first snow day. Last year they've had two snow days by now. Yes. My right. son was still in bed at eleven thirty. I thought, how nice oh, is that? Yeah. No, my I, dream. Mine were just crawling out of bed too. So yeah. Give it. Ah, oh, they enjoy that. They'll yeah. get something done at home. Exactly. Constructive. We know. Unfortunately, Vero's not with us today. No. She's feeling under the weather, yeah. so we want to keep her at bay. Yes. We wish you well, though. Hope you're feeling better soon. The flu bug. On the, it's run. on the rise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. We're going to start off our show today with a positive quote. Yes. And you're up. Yeah, we like to remain positive yeah. on this show with all the negativity. We try to aim for something that will it's make so your. It's so easy to. Fall into the trap of yeah. negative behavior yeah, and um, exactly. bad stuff. So, my quote is I am determined to be cheerful and happy in whatever situation I might find myself. For I've learned that the greater part of our misery or unhappiness is determined not by our circumstance but by our disposition. Very and good. that is by Martha Washington. Okay. And Martha Washington was the wife of the first president of the United mm. States, George Washington, who right. was inaugurated in 1789. Yes. And actually, um, it wasn't until after her death that uh, the ladies were coined first lady. She always went by oh. Lady Washington. Okay. Uh, yeah. Throughout her lifetime. That's right, too. Yes. But now, we, as we know, all the presidents that followed we had the wives entitled the first lady. Yes, exactly. So, but going back We away. have uh, a great show, <coughs> pardon me, we have a great show lined up for you today for our viewers. Again, don't forget, we're now on YouTube. Yes. Right? It, yeah. So you don't want to miss us on there. If Very you're just nice. catching little clips of us on our Have a Chat page, be sure to check out on YouTube where you can get the full episode, if I'm not mistaken. It's the whole show. <laughs> so if we make a full not ourselves, edited. we get it's to not watch it. Like, television or anything, <laughs> If I do something stupid, I can watch myself do stuff that's yeah. stupid again. Bloopers, all of that stuff yeah. is there. Oh, we haven't sworn yet. We're doing no. good, Audrey. No, that's just it. So there was a lot happening here in Miramichi this past weekend. Mm -hmm. um, the Hospice Miramichi put on their, uh, it was like a festival of trees. Yes. They're calling it Home for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Before the Big Brothers Big Sisters used to do the festival For of years. trees, so um, now that they're doing so well, Hospice Miramichi took it over, and um, my girlfriends and I, the Pink Ladies, mm -hmm. we've been coined um, that uh, we actually it was our friend Maureen's idea to do a tree, and we weren't too late. She allowed us to do actually a room yes. there, so um, it was beautiful, mm -hmm. pink. beautifully Everything done. In pink. Yes, exactly. But the whole building itself, it oh, was yeah. it was really unique because the whole home was done. It was at yeah. the uh, St. Michael's, um, the rectory that's out behind mm -hmm. there. And I had never been inside there. You mean there. the hospice? Yes, the, the hospice. hospice place. Itself yes, exactly. Is where and they use the rooms for decor. There was not just trees in the hallways, but actual rooms yes. were done up. Mm -hmm. The smell of uh, apple cider, cider nothing like it. and the cookies and the mm -hmm. music and the ambiance. It was all mm -hmm. there. Beautiful home, beautiful architectural beautiful. structure, that building. The, 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 what I went through and the trees themselves and the rooms they were decorated. It was, it definitely puts you, even though we didn't have a, a snowflake yet, and that's okay with me. me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was absolutely beautiful to see. It'll be, I'm sure they did really, really well. I'm pretty well sure. Well attended. The, when we went through, they had said the night before in that afternoon there was hundreds, mm -hmm. hundreds mm -hmm. that had gone through. And the $10 that you paid to get in, um, it gave you the entire weekend. Yes. So that if you had made a bid on a tree mm -hmm. and you wanted to go back and check to make sure that <laughs> you, you wanted, wanted that tree, yeah, I've got you trees. could go back. I have purchased a few sure. trees over the years, and uh, this, they're either, you know, they're just not your style, or it's just, okay, that's my kind of a tree, and you exactly. have to have it. Fully yeah. decorated, bring it home, set it up, and there it you is. go. No, I think our pink tree was a big, big hit. Yes. Um, you Beautiful. know, with the whole room done up, a lot of little girls were like, mm -hmm. this is what they want for their bedrooms. Their dream room. Yep. It yes. was, for sure. And the Beautiful. girls had lots of fun doing it, and uh, Maureen was just uh, tickled. With her how idea. it all turned out. Yeah, it was her idea. Grand. For sure. Big success. What else? Well, I have to announce that the 14th okay. annual Turkey Drive is underway. That's and it's right. to support the Rotary Club of Chatham mm -hmm. as they seek to collect 150 turkeys for deserving families in our community. Mm -hmm. December 1st through the 12th. Okay. Help make a difference by dropping off turkeys to Miramichi Meats in Nordine or the Great Canadian Dollar Store at 1746 Water Street. Right. Or you can buy a turkey or purchase a gift card at Sobeys in Douglastown or either Atlantic Superstore. 
So you can leave the turkey or a gift card there for pickup. So make a difference, please, if you're listening in your community this holiday season. And this is all proudly sponsored by the Rotary Club of Chatham and 99.3 The River. A great cause. Okay, great so December cause. 1st through the 12th. Starting on the 1st. Mm -hmm. So if you have an extra turkey or you have the means to yeah. help out in any way. Please do. Definitely. Drop them off. The turkeys, again, to Mary Machine, yeah. Meat Store Dean, Great Canadian Dollar Store, or buy a turkey or purchase a gift card at Sobeys in Douglas Town or either Atlantic Superstore. Leave the turkey or a gift card there for pickup. Yeah, okay? it's, it's, it's just so simple and so easy. So I just want to repeat myself so people, you know, when you give information, it's a little bit of mind overload. No, so exactly. That's just it. Hopefully we usually they got talk it. about so many things. Um, the other thing that happened this weekend that I'm not going to lie, I fell asleep on the couch last <laughs> night, though I wanted to catch it, and I did at the end, the American Music Awards. Yes, I had to Google it all because I'm like you. I had a play to go to last night. Oh, okay. So you weren't handy either. I know that... Uh, JLo was hosting, so mm. I had wanted to see it for that reason because she's so beautiful and she usually is. does an exceptional job with, you know, she's all the whole package. She is uh, she's really she's all, singer, all dancer, <laughs> actress, beautiful to look at, yes. beautiful body, um, yeah. nice, you know, personality. She's the whole deal. Yeah, for sure. So, it's a good so when I did wake up and I caught the the tail end of it, and Justin Bieber was closing up the show, mm -hmm. and it was raining. They had done this thing with the water. I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty neat. It was unique. I'm yes. hoping that he's, he's turning things around. I hope so. In his life and being mm. more on the positive side. Maybe he should watch Have a Chat. He's a very beautiful boy. If he can <laughs> he just, is. Uh, he put is. his whole act together and clean yeah. it up and keep no, on doing the good stuff young. in his life. And I thought a stellar performance was done by Celine Dion. I did catch that, too. She did the rendition of Edith Peloff's, oh, it was so beautiful, yeah. Emma Lamour. Yeah. And it was fully orchestrated. Uh, yes, it was amazing and it was powerful. For the she did hit some pitchy notes, I would did say. She? It wasn't yeah. her best performance. I've seen her twice in Las okay. Vegas. I thought she brought tears to my eyes at both shows. Last night, she had the power. She had the emotion. Obviously, she did it, right. too. Um, it was for the Paris attack Attacks. victims in That's honor right. of those persons who unfortunately lost their lives and are devastated, the people <gasps> in Paris and in the world. And she gave honor to those people. Mm. Um, her strength was there. She had an amazing gown on. And she's yeah. a powerhouse. But it just wasn't in my opinion, her top, top oh, performance, but okay. it was probably one of the best performances of the night. Was it? When you it came from the heart. Yeah, exactly. That's just it. Um, J-Lo herself, I didn't get to see her perform, but I did get to see the last outfit she mm. wore. Now, I didn't see the other outfits. Mm. Uh, I might have to Google them after seeing you that should. last outfit. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm hoping some of the other ones, as beautiful like we said, beautiful, beautiful body yeah. on her, but I thought that last outfit ugly. was... Ugly? Sorry. Can yeah. we use the word ugly on the show? Yeah. I think it was so. ugly. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a swear word. But her opening <laughs> one was Native American, was it? and it, it was, was a she had a fur. I don't know if it was real fur. I would be highly doubtful if it was if it was the real thing. But it was a imitation, perhaps fur coat, Native American looking. See, I'm trying to be like J Lo. I'm on oh, my yes. American. She inspired me today <laughs> with the Native American look. With that outfit. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad you're not wearing the last like outfit. Her, you know, just a little bit, and I wear her that blush. So there we go. Show. Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Um, but uh, she opened up with the jumpsuit underneath the coat, and okay. it was amazing. Her dancing, I thought, was top notch. She's not that She'll young anymore. No, She's not in her twenties. Like that? How old is she? Forty-two. Forty something. Okay, and she can yeah. move. Oh yeah. But yeah. she had a gorgeous yellow outfit in one scene. She had an amazing long gold gown. Mind you, it was still a little bit revealing, but yeah. not to the point of tacky, vulgar. Well, I it thought was, the it last was tasteful. one was. I thought the oh, last that was one, disgusting. It was. Okay. Okay. It was gross. Okay. I, I, she's beautiful enough all on her own. That I don't was think just she. Bad. I really don't. Mm. Uh, she doesn't need to do anything. <laughs> and Sofia Vergara got married to Joe on the weekend. <gasps> November twenty second was her wedding. Oh. There's I, another. Again, my invitation lost in the mail. Somehow, well, I got somewhere. there, but I mean, I didn't acknowledge it. <laughs> they didn't me. let you in? <laughs> <laughs> but they're a power couple and a beautiful couple as yeah. well. Yeah. I, I, I hold out all the hope in the world for them because yeah. uh, in that limelight and actors and stuff, they seem to ha struggle. A lot of them seem to struggle, so there's got to be up. some. Yeah, there's got to be some tricks yeah. or something there that to help them Men, stick it out and. Work it out. You work it out. We do. Nope. I've been with That's my husband. It. It'll be 33 years we've been together. And I mean, nothing in life is ever kosher. No. I mean, you have your little spats no. and you have your little, uh, what did you do that for? And your fights. Are... But, you know, after you're no. married for so long, it's just you, you have a few words negative to say to them. And then it's like, could I have my coffee now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of brush under the table. No, that's just it, you know. So, so but I did anyway. hockey on the weekend again, Audrey. Oh, did you? I'm a pro okay. professional hockey mom. 
Are you? I'm going to get my bench sweater. warmer. Bench warmer? No, I'm a good no. cheerleader, but Are I don't you? do it too, to embarrass my child or anything. No. But we do okay. travel a lot. And I've told him, you know, it doesn't matter about winning as long as you give it your 100%. That's right. Winning's nice. That's right. And it if is. you're competitive on a competitive is. team, which it is, okay. you should go for it and do. Give it your all. Give it your 100% mm -hmm. if it's a competitive team. And if you've done that, and walked away with a loss, right. you can hold your head up. That's right. I mean, I even carry that motto over when I'm talking to my kids because um, report cards come out this past week and yes, they did. the teachers. And, and there's always room for an improvement and, and sometimes, you know, they struggle a little bit. But my biggest thing is give it your all. Mm -hmm. That's you know what I mean, and if if a C is you giving your one hundred percent, well then that's what it is because right. I I don't believe that everyone is like a straight A student or you know what I mean. Sometimes it's just you know they struggle a little more, but I I don't I have zero tolerance for not even trying and no effort. And I no do go to parent teachers, so. and my children fortunately have mm. always maintained great marks. Yeah. Uh, there are areas that aren't you know super high. But they're, yeah. they're pretty good, they're really good marks. But I still go to parent-teacher because I think yeah. I'm a caring parent and my husband and we want to know, is there something that we should know? Is, mm. is, is he talking in class? Is he attentive when you're speaking as mm. a teacher? Um, it, you know, is he trying, does, do you find his homework's done? Because you know, they'll go up to their room and say, I'm doing my homework. Are they really? Are they? Or yeah. are they have their head Because when they get older, you don't want to be over them the entire no. time. Not in high school. But I recently just did a client's hair not too long ago and their family has moved here from South Africa and um, she's a young girl who's in her first or second year of university first actually and she was telling me a little bit about what high school is like there for them okay. and it's a uniform your hair has to be back tight not a hair out of place mm. no coloring your hair no makeup well, I would never survive. there's cameras I... in every classroom <laughs> I'm so glad I grew up here <laughs> yeah a camera in every classroom keeping an eye and she said one time she was tired and she sort of leaned her head over and her name came across the intercom saying uh, you need to pay attention and, she was probably and, trying to sneak makeup on I don't and, know. and let her hair come out of the tight but bun. I tell my kids, I said, you think you have it bad. I'm like, you know, they're they're pretty strict there in the way. But she said she actually liked it. She knew what to expect. I love there uniforms. There was no, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem but with that either. But I have a real problem with no makeup and ponytails. No, yeah, <laughs> it was. Shoot me Everybody now. had to look the same. Everybody had to be yeah. on the same playing field. And I, like I that. understand that. Mm -hmm. I understand the gist of that. But, uh, it takes competitiveness no, out of it, No, it does. Too. But, you know, yeah. On the same playing field. Exactly. But So are you decorated at all for Christmas? Because The, the salon is. Oh, okay. Well, that's your <laughs> my business. Salon. That's important. Yeah. No, but um, my youngest daughter last night was digging through the Christmas decorations. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. not going to lie. Looking to put up some lights in her bedroom. Aww. So I know she's getting, and now that it's snowing today, we're actually going to have. We'll have more have, of a motivation. I'm yep. slowly bringing things out. Tomorrow's the tree day. I is figure it? it's the 24th. and. Okay. Uh, my son's birthday I try to Christmas wait right Eve, until December. So, you know, I try to milk it that whole month and make it special. <laughs> and we do something in advance yeah. of his birthday yeah. because I okay. feel children born on Christmas Eve get robbed. They lose out. Well. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. If you ask any of them, anybody I've ever asked whose birthday's right close to there, my husband has a brother whose birthday's like the 27th, and he's always said that. Yeah, and Jansen used out. to always say, it's my birthday and Jesus's. Yes. <laughs> he put himself ahead of Jesus. <laughs> That's right. So we had to set him straight on that. No. You know, you're not yeah. first, you're second on that. No, exactly. There was, there was one born before you that we have to make note of. That's right. Definitely. So do we're going to have some good guests on you? this afternoon. We are, we do. We have uh, uh, Johannes Bosma, who is an author of The Christmas Photo, mm. which is a book that we want to talk about later on. But for our next segment of the show, we're going to actually have... Um, Andy Richardson, who's going to be talking to us a little bit with Christmas yeah. season coming and everybody going to be going out and spending a few more extra dollars, maybe more so than what we were planning on. And so he's going to talk to us a little bit about how keeping your head above water yeah. and how to budget. Be thrifty. Budget on a regular basis, but specifically going through this Christmas season. So that's going to be interesting. So, right. so you're not going to want to miss that. I just want to talk a little bit. We were touching last week on health tips. Yes. Just how to prevent yourself from becoming sick over the holidays. Since Vero's season. sick, she obviously <laughs> didn't follow any of our advice. <laughs> she didn't do a word I had to no, say. No. She went home and did exactly what I told her not to do. Uh, but uh, they say zinc okay. is a wonderful thing That's to have a mineral. in your system. Okay. Zinc is. And where would you get zinc? You can get it at the drugstore. But you, again, you have to be cautious and deal with your physician and pharmacist because yeah. some people may not be tolerant or, or even allowed to is have there any zinc. Foods? 
Yes, there's foods. a list of food, and I okay. have a list of food. So, I'm big on getting everything you can from oh, yeah. your foods. Well, if I don't have to take it in pill okay. form, to me, it doesn't feel like it's the, f the fake version All right. of it. So here are some things you okay. can have that contain zinc. Oysters. Do okay, like them? yeah, no. Not even no. seafood? No. Nope. Okay, nope. but you have to be cautious of seafood because they're a common cause of food poisoning, well, so you really yeah. have to, um, you know, very do them very okay. well when you're cooking them. Okay. Um, putting them in something. Boiling. Uh, so oysters, uh, that's your omega-3 fatty acids As well. you're getting from that, so that's yeah. very wonderful for you. You're crabs, and if you like crab cakes, you're incorporating zinc into your crab cakes. Okay. Lobster. I'll do the lobster. And actually pork chop. A oh, pork really? chop is very good we'll for you with the well. zinc. Uh, cashews. Okay, cashews. I, I, like. I, I can live they on them. They have zinc, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Chickpeas. Oh, I like that. Chicken and Swiss yep. cheese, just to name a few. Okay. So zinc, it says, is one of the most vital functions uh, to stimulate your white blood cells. And we know if your white blood cells are um, built up, that they fight against infections. That's so right. That they are a great thing. Vitamin C is an, um, a given. It's a given. Do you you can never vitamins? have it. I actually, again, I would prefer, I buy the clementines this time of year oh, as well. But with vitamin C, you have to remember, taking one, whatever that dose is, my husband tells me he actually bites off his vitamin C because mm. your body uses exactly what it needs is right there, right then and there, okay. and then excretes the rest. It does. So you must, throughout the day, get your vitamin C. Mm, I think I overdo it on my vitamin C. Oh, do you? Yeah. Because you're wasting it. I love, <laughs> I you, love my... If you take your full dose of... Mm -hmm at all at once and you take more than what your body needs, you're just going to excrete the rest. So to divvy it up, to take your vitamin C throughout the day okay, I take the chewy is the best way. Too. I like the taste oh, of them. 500 the milligrams vitamin C. Yes. So some foods of vitamin okay. C, uh, tomatoes, broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, cabbage, uh, red and green peppers, fantastic. Yeah, they're really hot. Okay, some of the fruits, uh, pineapple, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, cranberries. Right. So all those berries, watermelon, cantaloupe, kiwi. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have so many. Grapefruit this time of the year. I can't yeah. stand grapefruit. No. But oh, you I even love. Get your, do you? I love grapefruit. Oh, that, that's the one thing that makes me pucker. Oh, really? No, I, I, I like that grapefruit. bit of a tart, tart, tart taste. I, I just recently, I'll make note just before we go to commercial, um, someone was giving me a little advice because we were talking health and things like that, and she was asking me if I had ever heard of eating for my blood type. I haven't. And no. I didn't know that that was a thing. No, so, I haven't. So, you know, I'm O positive. Whether you're O, A, or B, or a combination, there's actually a diet out there for you. Good. There's certain foods that you should be eating and shouldn't be eating. So, uh, Next week, you could research that a bit yeah, and share with our audience. Exactly. I would so, be interested in hearing about that. Yeah, we're going to take a little short break. We're going to be back with our guest, Andy Richardson, who's the CEO of Bo Bears Credit Union. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more. Have a chat. Hi, and welcome back to Have a Chat. I'm Audrey Lynch with my co-host Judy Loge, and joining us now is Andy Richardson, who is the CEO of the Bobear Credit Union, Mayor Mashi. Welcome, Andy. Thanks Hi. for joining us. Hi, Andy. Thank you very much for having me. My fellow Rotarian. Yes, exactly. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we have so a lot of fun there. You're going to be here to talk to us today a little bit about um, budgeting, first-timer's guide to budgeting, yep. helping us get through the Christmas season without going into too much debt or mm -hmm. any if at all possible yes we have you had brought us a little flyer here and that um, there's all kinds of information that we're going to be going over but first I'd like you to tell us a little bit more about you yeah sure um, I've, I've been a resident here of Miramichi for about four and a half years I came mm -hmm. here and took the job as a CEO back in 2011 and joined Rotary quite quite soon after that. So happy about that. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun at Rotary. A lot, <laughs> a lot, of, great, a lot of great things there. <laughs> and there's some things we can't talk about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been in the financial services industry for in excess of 25 years, okay. working with different organizations throughout my years, but most recently with the credit unions since 2008. Mm -hmm. um, my wife and I and our three children moved here, like I said, in 2011. I have two in high school, one in middle school, so we have a an active family and Busy guy. Um, I'm a part-time taxi driver in the evenings to oh, get yes. my kids shuttled to wherever they need to go and that's right it's part of the reason that I don't have much hair so that's a little bit of the background about myself here and nice to yeah yeah Miramichi is a great place I, I would recommend it to anybody that wants to 
Greg's a fan. That's Mary Machine is really a fantastic nice to spot to, to do it. Good yeah. to know. Well, according to this little flyer that you brought us, there mm -hmm. are a lot of myths about budgeting. And it says maybe you think only your grandparents bother to budget, but apparently that's not the case. Well, no, you should be budgeting all the time, and you should be looking at it from a big picture mm -hmm. for for e each year, and even looking at something in five years out, getting a plan set in place for yourself. Because right. a lot of people, I think, think that uh, budgeting is just a matter of saving money for the future. Like exactly, budgeting yes. is actually there's an actual. Plan. Yeah, there's, 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 there's various items. Exactly. What you want to do when you're first starting out is mm -hmm. finding out where where do you sit right now. So what you need to do is take a look at your financial assets and liabilities. Okay. So you can de determine what we call net worth, and that's the money left over from your assets and your liabilities. So, so yeah. the money that's coming in and the money that's coming out right here, right now, mm -hmm. and if there's anything left over right here right now right <laughs> well exactly yeah that's part of it that's, some that's people part could, of it. right at the moment if you're going into it it could be very scary that they take a look at the money coming in and coming out and actually they're going in the hole every month that's pretty scary mm. so now you got to sit down and rethink all when, of that yes when you when you see that then you want to take a look okay what am i spending my my money on mm -hmm. how can i make changes in my day-to-day -day routines so that I can save money for whatever plans you may have. And it could yeah. be a, a trip to Florida. Mm -hmm. It could be saving for children's mm. educations. Yes. It could be saving for your own retirement. Yeah. Any type of special plan that you may want to save for. It could be saving for a down payment for a home yes. if you're young and, and starting out. Okay. Uh, so there's all kinds so of... So you should have some goal, even even if it's... Some people don't have the ability to look that far ahead, retirement, exactly. depending on their age. So yep. make goals that are actually shorter term as well that you can reach. For sure. The, the, the basic, the bare minimum that I would suggest is look at paying yourself first from every paycheck. Oh, okay. So when you get a paycheck and it comes in and your gross is $1,000, but you actually net out $700, mm. that net, take 10% of that and put it in a savings account. Good idea. Yeah. So if you did that every week, you'd be surprised how quickly that $70 builds up. Mm. And then once you've started building that nest egg, you can then decide, how am I going to spend that? Spend that. Is it for um, luxury items that you want to purchase? Is it for a specific saving for a down payment for mm -hmm. a house? Or is it for your retirement? Mm -hmm. Or is it just some fun money too? Exactly. Yeah. And, you can, and you can have more than one plan. Okay. So you could be splitting that $70 into four or five different areas because you've got different objectives that uh, you want to that's meet. That's right, right, different goals. You're making it sound really easy though. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. No, no. Because now, especially coming into, you've been doing that all year long, but now we're coming into the season where it's Christmas and you're going to probably, like most of us do. Splurge. Yeah, yeah and you do. spend a little bit more beyond what we're bringing in. Yes, and that's. So how do you keep from? Well, again, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, well, it's, it's being disciplined okay. and saying, okay, for Christmas this year, I've got a budget of 2000 or $3,000 mm -hmm. that you want to spend for Christmas. That would include all the gifts that you want to, you want to have. The groceries. The groceries that you've got because we know Festive at, season, at Christmas food. time mm -hmm. there's lots of family gatherings exactly. and friends getting together. Mm -hmm. So we all go out and buy that extra roast You're or right. buy the extra turkeys. Or we do buy some beverages that yeah. we fill up the cupboards <laughs> yes, with. Yes, because you never Not know. Not just who, hot chocolate. That's right. Only if it's on sale. I only buy it <laughs> if it's on sale. Doesn't that count? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's things like that that you want to plan for, you and there plan. are going to be times that you will probably go over your budget. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you have a plan and okay. you try to stick to it, most likely you're going to meet that goal. Because really, what you're doing when you budget, mm -hmm. you're setting yourself a goal and you're creating an action plan for yourself. I have because one tip, Andy and Audrey, is I'm not ever going to advise anybody to go grocery shopping with their children. Oh, Don't. Yeah, I yeah. mean, kids I only did it when most. they were younger because I wasn't allowed to leave them home alone. But. They want things <laughs> that you would never want to put in your cupboard, like the Oreos and the Fruit Loops and all this stuff. So they cost mm. you probably $100 in excess of what you normally would spend. It's amazing it's what they can spot the kids, in the aisles yeah. that and we're totally oblivious to. I know. No. And no. CNN reported that in the last 10 years, it's a 40% jump in, in raising a child. Like the cost of living for a child is 40% higher. Than a, nobody yeah. ever tells you before you go to have children how expensive it's going to be. No. But we all know once you're into it, 
it is yeah. an expensive Well, the program. report said that you're going to spend about $227,000 on a child from the age of birth to oh, 18 don't. years old. I'm in the middle still of no, the no, throes of all of this. Don't birth, birth to yeah. 18 like, years old, $227,000 is what they're saying it's going to be. Oh, and yeah, that's just to feed, clothe, and house them. Yes. That's, yeah. no, that's nothing extra? No, not the toys. <laughs> not the toys. But not the education. I'm not sure Christmas. Some, you know, uh, but then you have your sports activities. Kids are, like, yeah. they need gear. Mm -hmm. They need registration mm -hmm. for teams. They need swimming Equipment. lessons. They, there's so much. So is that all part of now that you have five tips that you yep. can... So you're going to well, go over those. You yeah, mentioned well, the first yeah, couple. Yeah, what we do, you, you want to look at where you are today. Okay. So you look at the money coming in and the money going out. And you also want to look at what you own and what you owe. Okay. Because what you owe and what you own determines your net worth. And your net worth, you want that to be growing. When your net worth grows, that means that you're saving. It means you, that you own more than you actually own. Mm -hmm. No, say that one more time. I got it. I your, your net worth. Own more than you I own. Own more than what you own. Or owe. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> okay. Owe. Right. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, in other words, it's, you've got your loans over here that would be mm -hmm. for $10,000, and you've got your car and your furniture and your four wheeler that's worth $30,000. The difference is that you'd have a positive net worth of twenty thousand dollars. Okay. So what you want to see worth. that net worth growing. Okay. So as you get into a budget where you're determining your savings plan and what you're going to be setting aside, right? To grow your net worth, that net worth will grow over time. Right. Understand? <gasps> okay. Mm -hmm. And the objective would be as you as you move forward, what you plan to save and you're going to spend at some point. Right. You're going to you're going to spend it within what you've saved for Not that particular over purpose. Not yeah. over indulged, mm, right? Good tip. So it's 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 discipline. It's doing it regularly. Uh, I would recommend that you do an annual budget and then you you look at your financials every month when you when your statements come in, mm -hmm. which you either get in a paper form through now the mail or you can get them online. Mm -hmm. Um, take a look at your statements and just track to make sure, number one, the pay that you're supposed to get in, the right. positive money that, that's coming into your account is getting in there, yes. but also look at what's coming out of your account, yeah. making sure that what you have spent your money on is actually yours. Sometimes mistakes do happen. Yes, they oh, do. Yes. And yes. it's, it's yes. up to us as consumers to look at our, mm -hmm. our financial statements, our, sta yeah. our monthly Not banking Not just your statements. bank statements, but your credit card statements, credit cards even too. more so lately because exactly. there's so much going on with that yes. and fraud and mm -hmm. duplication of an uh, item you purchased. Purchases and stuff like yep. that. Making and sure refunds, that refunds, watching that for go, refunds. That they that. actually go through and stuff yes, like that. Yes, I had to return something to the U.S. and I thought, I wonder if that'll go on back onto my U.S. card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I checked and it did. Yeah. But just to be up on things, you have to be no, vigilant you do. about. You yeah. do. Because we've recently cards. gone through our credit cards and we've gone through and there's actually a couple of things that I've been phoning and trying to get it through. And not to throw anybody under the bus, I still don't understand what it is. But there's an AT&T purchase every month going through, which is, mm -hmm. of course, a phone company. I don't deal with AT&T. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't understand what this purchase is. And there's, of course, a number there to call, but we can't get through. Mm -hmm. So now we have to go back and call Visa and go, what, what is this that's yeah. going through my card? We, but you're we deal with, you're checking you know it what I mean? Though. Keep an eye on it. Definitely yep. go through it, even if it's just, and it's only a couple of dollars, but it's not the point. Yep. It, it all, all of that adds up. But mm -hmm. what would be your advice to, especially this Christmas season, to avoid... You know, because I'm assuming you, you don't want anyone using their credit cards. Or that would be what? the best idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Let me see them. Hold them out. I cut them out. I have to go now. <laughs> Excuse me. If you're no gonna, longer part of this conversation. Yeah. If you're going to, when, when you use credit cards, because okay. we all do. And right. we're, today, in today's economic environment, everybody has access to credit cards. And That's they're right. very easy to get access to. Well, it's, it's a way to build your credit as it is, well. It is. It is. It, it is. Okay. Provided you use them responsibly. Right. right. So a couple of the key things with credit cards is make sure you pay them on time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Pay more than the minimum, minimum. payment because yeah. the minimum payment is mostly interest, mm -hmm. yes. which means you're paying the credit card company and you're paying very little on the outstanding principal. My balance. rule is double. Whatever yeah. it says, yeah. make it double. Double, yeah. Right. Yeah. And the, Automatically. Yeah, exactly. Checking your statements like we've already talked about mm -hmm. and always staying within your limit and actually try to stay below your limit. The sooner, the closer you creep up to the top of the limit of the card, oh, okay. that can damage mm. your okay. credit rating. So oh, because you, you're always staying at the borderline. Close to the top. You're almost okay. using it to it's its good. maximum amount. It's a really important And step. the other thing is, if it's ever lost or stolen, 
contact your credit card company right away. Yeah, usually that's, I that's lost, I lose mine, and I find it five minutes later <laughs> right. after I've canceled yeah. it. It's like, yeah. oh. no, yeah. no, but it's true. But credit card companies are getting better with uh, being able to detect and pick up uh, fraud or things like activity yes. that they, they monitor seem them to be, very closely. Yeah. And I like that. They have software that actually monitors where your regular spending is. They can mm. pa they can mm. they can follow your, your patterns. patterns. Grocery yeah. stores, so, for example, if you go to yeah. the supermarket, you know, five times a week, or that's another way though to budget, yeah. isn't it? I find if you get your groceries all in one shot, mm -hmm. yeah. then you're not as likely yeah. to say, that's "Oh, I, I think I forgot bread and milk." By the time you think you go back for those two items you've forgotten, you end up grabbing extra. Yeah. So you you get your groceries. Yeah. And then that's on a Monday, and by one. Wednesday you think, oh, I need just two more items I forgot. You go, and then you bring back the extra, extra, yeah. and that adds up, and your gas adds up. Oh, yeah. So that's yeah. one way to shop in one haul. Well, for groceries, one of the old tricks that I used to do is I would make a list of the groceries that I was going to go and shop at at Sobeys and Superstore and wherever mm -hmm. else, and then I would write down what it was going to cost me to to buy to buy those, add them up, and then I knew exactly what it, I had a good That's idea a of what plan. it was going to cost me when I went out. Yeah. So that if mm -hmm. if I was within ten or twenty dollars of that, I knew I was okay. That's good. But I, I didn't get a shock of oh my gosh, I thought it was going to cost me a hundred. That's a really, really good idea. Really I, got a real, I can judge it now. I because I, I go, I feel like I know and the regular things that I buy, and when I've gotten extra things because you mm -hmm. don't buy the cleaning supplies every single time. No, or but yeah. I do buy them. Like and I do load up on them if I think mm -hmm. I'm not going to make five sale. trips for. If they're on sale, is a key yeah, to do exactly. that. Exactly. They're, they're an expensive item. They are. It is. They, it's it's surprising how much. No, that's just it. And supplies. Different things like that. So being a smart shopper makes a difference as well. But do you find when it comes to the credit cards, one thing that I've noticed um, because I'm a business owner now, and when I go to ring a client through, and you know, I ask them if they're going to use cash or plastic, and mm -hmm. they haul out the plastic, whether mm -hmm. it's debit or credit, mm -hmm. they tend to use the credit card because they want the points, they want the points, they want the points. And I'm like, is that a <laughs> trap for us at the same <laughs> no, it's time? It's worthwhile. You know what I mean? Get the it, 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 there's, there's so many different cards with so many different reward Frequency, programs. Yes. yes. It, it, people. It, it, as long as you're using them and, and following the, the five paying. tips, paying paying on time, mm -hmm. paying mm -hmm. more than your minimum, trying to keep okay. trying to pay it off every month if you can. If you're using right. your your credit card as your operating mm -hmm. account right. to run everything out okay. of, you should almost be paying that off every right. month. Yeah. Because again, with your budget, you right. know what's coming in. Right. And then you know what what you're what's going out based on the mm. transactions you have on your credit right. card. Well, here's a question. Mm -hmm. um, so I used the credit card to help open my business. I had borrowed money. I have that loan, but I used my credit card to help buy my supplies. So mm -hmm. obviously, I jumped ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just making that minimum payment, not going to cut it for sure, for sure. Exactly. So I double it for sure. Yep. But what is the best way to budget to drop it quicker, or you know what I mean, like, and not be staying at that end? Like, is it? Because it obviously doesn't make any sense to take every cent that comes through the business and plunk it on the credit card. We still have to, I still have operating costs. Exactly. Right? And, and that's so you're like, okay, wait a minute. Now I'm trying to keep this from getting ahead of me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know what I mean? I have to have something that I bring home and my operating cost as well. Yeah. So, so you got to look at, you got to look at your cash flow. Okay. And looking at, again, from a business perspective, mm. what you project you're going to be earning which is not always a definite number because no. you've got clients coming and going and you don't have all Various always seasons. the same amount of people coming in every week. That's right. So you've got to judge based on the ebb and the flow of your client base coming into the salon, right? Mm -hmm. Then you, you know what your expenses are going to be. Yes. Because you've got, yep. <laughs> there's fixed expenses, there's variable expenses. That's right. But you pretty well can, can judge those. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, you either are going to be above or below That's the water. Right. So if, if you've got excess cash flow, apply that to the credit card okay. or the line of credit That's to right. pay it down more quickly. Exactly, mm. because when I look at the credit card as opposed to the loan and the interest rate on the credit cards, mm -hmm. which is another discussion yeah. for sure, um, I tend to put it to the credit card because the interest rate is so much higher there and I have a fixed payment that comes out for the line of credit. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, what other what points do you have, Andy, for viewers? Well, well, the other thing that, that you want to do is once once you do, once you have a handle on what you're making mm -hmm. and what's coming out, you know if there's a positive or a negative every week or every two weeks, depending on how you get paid, or every month. Mm -hmm. 
after after that, then you then as an individual, you want to set up your budget, and that's where you have to look at how you're spending your money. Mm -hmm. So you can you can do that by looking at all the transactions that go through your checking account or your Visa account or both, and categorize those. So you would have grocery purchases. You're going to have could be entertainment, supplies, could mm -hmm. be. Uh, kids clothing uh, kids clothing all those essentials and then of course there's going to be some fun things that you've done in there we mm -hmm. hope so yeah exactly everybody needs that in one minute can you sum up what you have left for us now sure make yeah. sure that we don't yeah one minute. don't forget anything this is valuable information yeah I'm well, loving it you can always have me back if you want. Yes, <laughs> we are. Oh, for sure. I'm going to call you back. There you go. Pencil them in, Stacey. <laughs> but but once, you've, once you've done those things, then identify things that you want to be saving for. Okay. Short term and long term. Mm -hmm. Right. So that you can start adjusting what you're spending to save for those things. Okay. And once could you have a vehicle those, or anything. It, exactly. It yeah. could be whatever purchase that you want to make. Exactly. Have a goal. And it could be more than one. No, exactly. And it may mean that you're going to have to make some hard choices about how you spend your That's money. That's right. But at the end of the day, make it fun because what you're doing is you're creating a plan for yourself. Yes. And you'll see okay. you'll see the rewards. Okay. Thank Great you again, to know Andy, all this. for sharing all this Thank valuable you information. For You're very welcome. We will be right back with our next guest, Johan Bosma, author. Good afternoon and welcome back to Have a Chat. I'm Audrey Lynch and uh, my co-host Judy Loge. And up next is our next special guest, uh, author John Bosma. Johan? Johan? No, I'm terrible. Johannes. 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 Right. But Very everybody nice. knows you as John Bosma. Um, you were also a, uh, you're a retired school teacher. Yes. And tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, well, I was born in Holland and uh, as a matter of fact this April was the, uh, April 11th would have been this 60th year since we've been in Canada. Oh, Imagine. you're kidding. Yeah, right. and, Born um, in Holland. I didn't know that. I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting that. <laughs> 60 years. 60 years. And um, I have, um, well, three sisters and my mother, father, and I came over. And uh, mm. uh, I'm married with uh, two grown children. Yes. Um, one was, uh, is a, a teacher like myself mm -hmm. and uh, was, a, was a journalist before that. And yes. Teacher. Garrett. And Garrett. And my daughter is... Uh, is now uh, has gone back to school. She's living in out in BC, and she's um, uh, taking early childhood development. And hope uh, she'll end up being a teacher as well. Beautiful. Her name's Mary, and Mary. you also have grandchildren. Five grandchildren. Oh, John, yeah. that's quite something. Yes. Oh yes. So sure. interesting, man, and a wonderful teacher, I have to say. He taught in the system for a long time, and nothing but positive things to say about you. And you have taught my children, at least one of them, and mm -hmm. uh, taught them a lot. I know that. Yes, well, so, um, we miss you in this. We miss you as an educator out there, but now you're author. Yes, uh, doing some authoring. Yeah. No, so you're launching. This is not your first book. Well, but this is your first one that's being published and launched. Yes, correct? I had a book. I did a book uh, on my uh, based on my father. I did sort of a. I did an interview with him uh, mm -hmm. in the hospital. He. Uh, when he was uh, he was in Moncton and uh, had the opportunity to spend a weekend with him, so I uh, mm -hmm. asked him a lot of questions, and and that ended up in a book uh, mm -hmm. along with uh, stories that uh, my nieces, nephews, my my wife and uh, sisters wrote about him, mm -hmm. and uh, put it in a, in a book. Uh, it was uh, it was called uh, uh, in in well he, he, the Frisian term for grandfather is Paka. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what I'm called as well, okay. and I uh, really like that name. Paka? Yeah, Paka. Cute. And uh, anyway, it's, it's called uh, uh, Paka's uh, uh, Stories, uh, sort of speak, because he, he used to always, I think it was a Dutch expression that does that, where mm -hmm. he always said, uh, you know, this sort of this uh, sort of speak, and it was, uh, so ev yeah. everything he used to tell us, even in the interview, he'd, he'd throw that in every once in a while, and I'd, Put it into the book, so he was a remarkable I Miriam. Mean, she said, Listen, I know that if you mentioned his name, no, exactly. He went by Jeep, Jeep. was his nickname, but Jeep. everybody knew him and admired him. So, yeah. I think uh, you chip off the old block, John. Jeep and his bread, Jeep's bread. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your, your husband used to hang around the golf course all the time, yes, he did, eating his uh, sandwiches. Yeah. And he was a big golfer, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And lovely cover on there, yes. that's a memorable well, Christmas occasion. Very... And that is my, my father and mother, and uh. Aww. And our a German Shepherd that we call Lassie. <laughs> okay, put a little twist on <laughs> yeah, the dog. Right. Yeah, that is so precious. What uh, what made you want to publish this book? It was 
more so yourself, or you said it was an idea of? It, it, well, it was something I always uh, it was on my bucket list to do, and uh, have my uh, some stories published. And mm -hmm. um, well, I had uh, it sort of started with uh, the uh, the leader had a, a, a Christmas essay uh, story contest mm -hmm. in 1991, and right. I encouraged my students to uh, enter. They they have one in the Moncton Times as well, but mm -hmm. that's so f much farther away. So it I is. said, let's do it locally. So I thought, well, if they're going to write them, it, it was uh, they didn't have to. It was uh, I'd use it as a as an assignment, I guess. Mm -hmm. But um, so it was volunteer, you know, all uh, all voluntary. But uh, I thought, well, if they're going to write one, then I, maybe I should do t do it as well. So I've done it every year after that until the contest sort of came to an end. Mm -hmm. But I've done it at, at Millerton Schools where I started, and then I uh, wrote one at. at uh, at Nelson School and then Dr. Loger where I retired. So. You retired from that school. Mm -hmm. yep. So you led by example basically. You led these students to produce some wonderful pieces of writing and now you well, have your own book, A Christmas <laughs> Photo. I'm yeah. excited because you have a launch coming up this weekend. It's November 28th actually this Saturday okay. and it will be held at Seasons View Cafe. Right. And I think they make amazing Christmas gifts. So they if my do. mother and father are watching, don't buy one. <laughs> <laughs> no, do not, do not get that book because I will be. So that's going to be a fun day and I'm sure people mm -hmm. that know you, you're a well-known man and now that they know that you have a book out, they'll be curious. Yes, well, uh, yeah, it, it was uh, I guess when I look back on it, uh, some of the stories, uh, you know, it was a chance, uh, and it is, like I said, I've written a lot of plays as well. Mm -hmm, and you have. It, it's your opportunity to get your views across, uh, you know, without coming exactly from you, just yeah, through a character exactly. or through a play. Is it all Christmas stories, John? Yes. All, all Christmas stories. Yeah, there are eight, eight Christmas stories. In all there. right. Yeah. And he's given me the honor of doing a short reading of one of the stories right. at his oh, launch. Really? Yeah. Oh, I can't fantastic. wait. Mm -hmm. I, I, you, you don't want to give him the finish uh, product because you want them to be enticed into buying the book. Yes. But we'll just give a little bit of a taste of the story. Entice people. Oh, you, you want... When we do the reading. Oh, yes. Just a page. Book. Exactly. Just a page. Just exactly. Just a page. Just not page. to just give it away. away. Right. So as a child, did you start loving to write like when you were in junior high or even younger than that? Yeah, I was, uh, I mean... I was all tied up in Dick and Jane okay. in those books, right? <laughs> Me too. And I didn't do a lot of extra reading until in grade five I, I received a, a prize for social studies and oh. and that sort of, I, I majored in history at university so that, that was kind of the start but uh, mm. this book was, uh, I, I read the book and I read it more than once, it was um, a Mountain of Adventure by Enid Blyton all right. and she's written a lot of uh, books for kids. Uh, you know, I even did a a study novel in junior high, uh, Hill's End, that she wrote, and uh, anyway, that sort of got me started, and then, mm -hmm. of course, once you start reading books, then you kind of feel like you might like to write your own. And you sure have done something and, uh, wonderful. Yeah. I just took a peek through some of these, and um, I can't wait to read the whole thing. Yeah. Now, you were a teacher all along as well, and, er, and you probably run across, like you said, to your students to actually write stories and be part of this contest. And um, I still have young children, and, and uh, I find that the younger ones don't want or are not as interested as reading as much paperback kind of things because of the electronics and everything mm -hmm. that are out there. But what is it as a teacher that you use to help encourage the kids to actually to read and to write? I constantly, my kids find it a chore. They're like, oh, mm, I it's read. my passion. Or if I, they actually looked at a page, I've gone as far as where I've taken a piece of paper and covered up so that they didn't look at it and go, oh, I can't read all of that. You know what I mean? And make it just a paragraph at a time. I, do, I don't know how to encourage them you to want, want them to, to be readers. To be readers. Or they don't have to love it, love it, but mm. still the advantages of being able to pick up a good book and be able to use your imagination as opposed to watching someone else put it together in a movie or something mm -hmm. like that. And you get to create the scene yourself from what you're reading because I said you could read the same book as me, but for me in my head it's a different picture slightly. Well, I, I guess I used to incorporate it into my into my language arts lessons. It mm -hmm. was um, uh, the uh, my students had to do uh, 50, at least 15 minutes of reading uh, for two nights during the week and they had to respond to it in some way. And it was in a little black uh, log book. I little black you book? Those. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then it was uh, Wednesday was poetry day so we did poetry and then Thursday they could write about whatever they wanted. Mm -hmm. But we, I started a, a, a sort of a program at uh, Dr. Loger called Reading Across Canada. Okay. And so every time they finished a book and did a, a book review, uh, we would 
put it on a chart and eventually I'd bring the class out and we'd put like so many books on a on a on the map we had a big map right. of Canada and uh, the, with the deal that once we reached British Columbia we'd have a, a British Columbia day you know, or we'd so have cool. a Canada day sort of thing and uh, that seemed to get a lot of kids going and and certain books like this book would be uh, is quite thin so yes. you know it's not I would just say well that's worth a book but if they re read say uh, Anne Frank Mm -hmm. uh, then that was worth five books. Mm -hmm. oh. And I had one uh, student who wanted to read War and Peace. <laughs> and oh, wow. He said, how much would that be worth? And I said, well, that's got <laughs> to be worth at least 15, if not 20 books. So he did, too. He, he went at it. And, there uh, you go. And then, uh, you know, they, they mm -hmm. got the, uh, you know, we, we, put it, we put the things, I put the uh, coupons up saying, you know, so many books. And, and then I had these uh, books on different uh, on uh, geography of, uh, well, different stories about different places in Canada. And when we reached a certain place, like say we reached uh, Brantford or we reached mm -hmm. Toronto, we do a, we talk a little bit about, that's you know, that's so. Great anyway, that, yeah. that seemed to encourage them. I like and then that I, idea. I had a grade six class once uh, where I had, um, since the uh, uh, Dr. Loger was the, the home of the Knights, I had Blue Knights and uh, White Knights. And mm -hmm. the, the White Knights, um, uh, had a certain program where they they did four logs a week and the and the blue knights if they if they chose they could do two two a week but uh, the white knights uh, I would take on a trip at the end of the year they would oh, and the and, the and the blue knights got got something too but not quite the same thing the can of peas or something so um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah right what no it was uh, you know we'd have a, an outing or something yeah. but um, I found that year too that a lot of students were reading and, uh, good. and yeah. motivation and motivation you know, just, uh, and some good incentives. brainstorming going yeah. on there to yeah. entice them to read and, and I'm, I'm crazy for books so and of course yeah. when I was at Dr. Loge uh, you know Harry Potter came out so oh, yeah. that yeah. goodness the big thing that, yeah. that was another yeah. big Hit thing series yeah, yeah. For now, sure. what do you choose to read in your now that you're retired? Are you still an avid reader, John? Well, I it, it depends. Uh, I, once it's it's like uh, it's like like splurging. Uh, once mm -hmm. I start, then I can't stop, Me and too. then I have to for a while. But right now, I'm, a, I'm just not uh, not haven't been reading a lot. But mm. I um, you know I like the the bestsellers and I, and the uh, the the uh, Giller Prize winners. I'll, yes. I like to read those history uh, books where you're a, you did yes, your major uh, in history. Anything to do with with history, I, I like. Mm -hmm. I still uh, still enjoy reading that, and I. Uh, I, well, actually, my brother-in-law is a, is, a, is a big reader, and uh, when he's finished a book, I usually get it from him. Perfect. And, you know, uh, like pass on books. I think you know, it's yeah. a wonderful way. That gets back to yeah. Andy's topic about budgeting too. I mean, why go buy if you don't have to buy a no. twelve dollar mm -hmm. or twenty yeah. dollar novel? That's right. When no. John reads one, why not yeah. pass it to me and so yeah. forth? It really helps but, not the uh, stores, but it helps us to but save. In answer to your question about you know uh, electronics, I mean, I yeah. tried reading. Uh, through the book, and the, I, it just wasn't the same. No, I it's not. I don't find it's I, the I'd same. I'd rather either. have a book in my hand. Me no, too. we've talked about that recently. We uh, actually started selling. Um, my oldest boy, who is with the Autism Resource Center, and they opened up the used book nook. Yes, and yes. had all those books donated. Now they recently moved from Chatham, to, uh, yeah, from downtown Chatham to in Douglastown, in behind the mall where the TNR used to be. Oh, right. okay. And of course, they don't have the walk-by traffic they used to, so sales are down, mm -hmm. and they're going to be in the mall this Christmas, you know, for uh, one of the weekends to sell books. But what they've done is they've gone out and they've taken um, to different venues, to different convenience stores, and even in my new salon, there's a array of books nice. and top authors. The books are in mint condition, nice. oh, yes. you know, that people can purchase those there. And then for me, 100% of the proceeds are going back to right. the book now. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. But uh, if there's any other areas that are looking to get that contract, 25% mm -hmm. of the proceeds actually stays with the store to sell the books on bo on behalf of the book nook because sales are down and, and great the Christmas money's gifts. running out and in it is condition, why it is. You? there's series of books you oh, wouldn't nice. believe the ones that she brought that we oh, displayed thanks. in the salon and um, but there's not there's nothing better than having having the hard copy in your I love hand. it there really and is speaking of which so we have on the back of your book your lovely wife Paula mm -hmm. that's it well, you're all coordinated so well what Christmas yeah. was that John can you recall like your uh, kids age Garrett and Mary she's only a little girl that's a no, new no, color for this Christmas by the way that's uh, popular oh, really? this again well, this the, Christmas those yeah are, <laughs> the, uh, that was 1987 no, those are uh, sweaters that my mother knit for, Aww, for instance, she did. That's a special She's picture. A lot of sweaters over the years. Now, no. do you have a favorite? Can we ask? There's a few stories in here that I'm sure you know strike your your heart as special. But is there one in particular? There are eight altogether. Because right. these are true stories. 
Are right. they? No, no. No, they're not. Oh, okay. No, 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 none of them are true. No. Okay. okay. No. There, your imagination's no. even better than I thought it was. I know. I was going to say, oh, this was, you know. No, there's, uh, well, I don't know. I, I guess uh, the, uh, th there's a story in there about uh, a, a little girl that uh, is in a coma just before mm -hmm. Christmas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I get the story. Apparently, it happened at PEI. Now, mm -hmm. I can't, I never found out if it was true or not, but uh, that was the, the true part. And, and then, then I had to write around that a story. make it a story Ooh, and uh, so I always tell people uh, the parts you think are true are fiction mm -hmm. and the parts that you think oh that couldn't happen that actually happened Very oh interesting. wow yeah. so something sparked yeah. your furthering yeah. your writing so a little idea came or a true fact and right. you expanded on that yeah that's well that's what you do you get a, you get an idea I think yeah. somebody said one time it's like throwing a pebble in the water and, and you know, have it and that, ripple. that ripple effect and it just one, one idea and then you you go go ahead with Smart it. Smart guy. Yeah. I have a friend. He's a writer, Frank Westcott from Toronto, and uh, he said he has to have a special space and special time to do his thinking, and you can't be distracted. Do you have the same right. type of thing going on? Well, that's the, see, that's the thing. That's why I never understood how uh, when I wrote my matriculations and uh, you know way back in the late '60s, uh, how they would say. Uh, uh, the last question would be worth 25 points, write a short story. Mm. And you'd have maybe a half an hour left. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you need time to, run, run, yeah. to bounce things Certainly around. Or when I go for a walk or I'm, you know, or, uh, I'm doing a little biking now, mm -hmm. you know, you have time to think and you let yep. it swish around a bit. You know, and then you know the ideas come together, but uh, you you can't. Five minutes, you'd have writer's block instantly. Yeah, no, but That's I, a I, bad I've, point. <laughs> I've never really had that, uh, just because I, I would, I'd have an idea, and then w once, if I, you know, I, and I learn to stop and say, okay, well, touch that later. Yeah. You know, but are you like me? Sometimes I'll have to do an event, MC an event, or even write something to present in public. If I have a great idea, I'll go to bed and then I'll be wide awake thinking about it and I'll jot it down in the middle of the night. I'll get up and say, that's my thought. I've done that. I've done that. And I've, uh, I remember when I was in high school, we had to do a skit uh, at the uh, variety show. And I came up with this idea for a song. Mm -hmm. And I got up out of bed and I wrote it all down. The next day, a friend of mine and I... Uh, we looked it over. Yes, we'll do that. And yes. then, you know, we did it. Just uh, they happens. come. Yeah. Those moments come yeah, to you when you least expect her when your mind's rolving and no. you can't sleep. No. I think I'm getting up, and I'll forget oh, that yes. tomorrow. No, so no. write no. it down. That's just it. it. So the book launch is coming up this weekend. Yes. On the 28th. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday. Book signing Saturday at Seasons at View. At noon. Oh, at noon. noon. Okay, at noon. Um, at Seasons View Cafe. And this book is going to be available here in the Miramichi in various bookstores. No. Or no. 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 Because this isn't a a published. It's a self-published okay. book so okay. uh, uh, we have to pay up front for it okay and then uh, so we've ordered so many but if, if we uh, if but you can buy the book there at Seasons View that day you can day. get it there yes. and if we you know if, if uh, you know, I, I didn't know how many to get so if we do run out within two weeks I can get more that's so. beautiful did you that's want to tell people thank you so much the book? well I'm, uh, I'm we're charging uh, uh, 200 300 <laughs> 15 dollars for the book that's very reasonable very for reasonable. all those beautiful christmas stories a great it's a treasure gift. i think it's a real treasure to have in your christmas no that's just it thank you so home. much again for thank joining you. us today Love and telling us lunch. all about it for sure don't want to miss that again don't forget we are now on youtube if you didn't catch today's show or you're just going to catch a little clip of it um check us out on youtube just for google sure. have a chat yes youtube and have that's a chat right. Exactly. And we're just thinking, Judy and I had an idea. We might start bringing in from now until Christmas some old photos. I just love this photo that you have on the mm -hmm. cover Me of this too. book of when we were kids mm. underneath the Christmas tree Can't and wait. the way we used to decorate and the and what we used things to wear and how then. we used to look. I, I'm just dying to see what Judy's hair looks like. Oh. <laughs> I think um, everybody will be. Yeah, for sure. so we'll work on that, Mom. Yes. If she's listening, dig some out for me. Thanks for joining us. We'll Thank see you, you again next week. Good afternoon.